You're now listening to the Tax Smart REI Podcast. Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Tax Smart REI Podcast. Today, we're joined with Taylor Brugna, accounting partner here at Hall CPA, and he's going to be discussing the importance of having a bookkeeping system and why you need to have one in place. It's not something you can neglect. So Taylor, I know you've been on the show a number of times now, but for it's always new listeners tuning in, would you be able to give us just kind of a, a little overview of your background and what you do here in the accounting industry? Yeah, absolutely, Tom. So first and foremost, thank you so much for having me back. Uh, always have a great time when I'm on the show. And Ryan, great to be with you here as well. A little bit about myself is I am a real estate investor as well. So I own 135 units down in Tampa, St. Pete. At the firm, I am the accounting partner. So what I specialize in here is making sure that our clients have the most efficient and effective accounting systems possible. So I'll dive in, I'll look at what's wrong, I will propose different solutions in order to get our clients the access to information that they need to make the best decisions possible. Absolutely, absolutely. Accounting is super important. And we're gonna dive into all of that right now. So on that note, you know, this is kind of start off because I know we talk a lot about taxes here on the show and everybody loves to save money on tax, and that's awesome, but there's also accounting. So why is accounting so important for real estate investors? I think the firm offers a variety of different services, but anytime I get on a call with a prospective client, I always start with accounting. And the reason why I start with accounting is because it's really the foundation for everything else you're going to do as a real estate investor. So if you want access to better information to run the business, if you want to know which property to buy next, or maybe which type of property to specialize in, accounting can do that. If you want optimal tax strategy, you need good financial information to actually be able to calculate gains and losses and deduction and potential tax liability or tax savings or things like that. It could also be that you may have a lender reporting requirement that in order to get new debt, you need a lender report that shows really clean financial statements that are, are presented cleanly and accurately. In addition to on the lender side, maybe on the investor side, if you want to raise more capital on the equity side, there's going to be limited partners who request financial statement. There's going to be partners that request updates throughout the cycle of a deal. So I can go on and on as far as why accounting is important. But hopefully that's enough to show you that it's basically the foundation for everything that you're going to do in the, in the real estate business. Yeah. And what's funny is I had a post a little while ago and I kind of shared with people, hey, these are like seven fast answers to tax questions. And one of them was just very simply like, you want to get more tax deductions, have an updated bookkeeping accounting system. Then you actually know What's your profit, right? You know, all your revenue, all your deductions and all of that. And so many people chimed in on that, a mix of CPAs and non-CPAs, but it is just so foundational to everything that you do, not just taxes, but just running a business. Are we profitable? How are we doing? And all of that. And what's unique, I think about accounting, bookkeeping, all of that is that it is one of the things that everyone has to do uh, specifically for their tax return right? Everyone has to do that. But when it comes to something like a tax strategy that we talk about on this podcast, say the short-term rental strategy, right? We talk about it, but like you might not actually do that strategy. But guess what? Whether you implement that strategy or not, you still have to do bookkeeping. That is like a universal thing, every rental property, every business, no matter what. And so that's, I think, a really unique thing of just making sure that you calculate all of your deductions Things like bank reconciliations, we might talk about that, I guess, uh, today, just making sure you actually capture everything. But it's just so foundational to everything else that you're going to do. Totally agree. Absolutely. You don't know how many times I've been on a call with, with somebody, especially around like year end, and people are like, should I buy this vehicle? Should I go ahead and do this cost segregation study? And I'm like, you know, do you have your financials? Can I see what your profit and loss is? Are, like, how close are you to a loss this year? Or, you know, how much of a loss do you need to offset that W 2 income or that active income? And they're like, I don't have my financials. So I'm like, you know, sitting here shooting in the dark, hoping that, you know, we're doing the right moves. But if you have clean financials, it's really easy to make those decisions and say, here's, what the results are going to be if you implement certain strategies. So not only important for making decisions on a business front, but also for making those tax strategy decisions as well. So, uh, you know, Taylor, kicking it back over to you, I, you know, I know we've seen a lot of nightmare scenarios with people who don't have good bookkeeping. You know, what are the downsides of not handling bookkeeping? 
A couple of things. Maybe I'll start with just compliance, and then I'll also go into a bit about just running the business uh, more effectively. But to start with a compliance perspective, most tax returns. So if it's going to be a partnership return, maybe it's an S corporation, maybe it's a C corp, whatever it might be. Basically, everything except a 1040 is going to require a balance sheet to be reported on the tax return. So some clients will come to us and say, hey, I've got my financials, here they are. And it's just, here's my rental income. I had a couple of expenses throughout the year. I had some property taxes and they have a net profit number. What a lot of clients don't realize is that that actually only gives you half of the tax return. And we can't file the return (laughs) without the other half. And the other half is the balance sheet. So the balance sheet will consist of assets like, of course, your bank accounts, your loan escrow accounts. Uh, It'll include liabilities like your mortgage. It may be loans to some private investor. Maybe it'll include equity of how much money you put in. But these two financial statements work together. And in order to be compliant and, f- and and fill out a tax return accurately, you need that information. So that is kind of a mild scenario of prospects who come in that don't necessarily have a great system in place. Now, on the far side of, of not being compliant at all, there are some clients that don't have any books. And then what happens is, is we simply just cannot do the tax return at all. And what happens is, is that they, that they have to file late. They incur penalties in, in, in order to file late. And our accounting team is great and we clean up things as fast as we can. But sometimes if you neglect the system for a year or two years, it can quite literally take months to clean up something like that. So I covered compliance a bit. Now what I could also cover is just the scary impact of running a business blindly. So this is really for all types of real estate, but I can use uh, fix and flip investors as an example. If you are flipping five houses at once, you are renovating them all at once, there's complete chaos going on, there's a lot of contractors in and out, a lot of bills being paid. If you don't know your budgets, if you don't know the profitability on each house, you're going to continue to buy properties even if you don't know if they're making money. And at some point, The only way to find out is going to be your bank account balance. And by then, guess what? Unfortunately, it's it's too late. All all of the damage has already been done. So as far as running your business blindly, this could happen with flips. It could happen with rental properties. You might have a rental that that you feel good about and you think is cash flowing 500 bucks a month for two years. But ultimately, there's too much going on in the bank account where you don't necessarily know that it's underperforming because you don't have an accounting system. And that might lead you to a different decision if you had know that information. So, so maybe you want to sell, maybe you want to refine, maybe you want a 1031 exchange. All of that really ties in together. Yeah. And going back to compliance, what do we normally do? Or like, what do you advise people do as far as like, hey, I've got this prior year tax return, right? In general, we want that to tie into the financials and make sure they match. Is there anything unique there or kind of a simple solution that we do or you recommend to people? Yeah, yeah. So it's a very good question. And and what Ryan is referring to is that in order for an accounting system to kind of balance with the tax return, the end of year balance sheet for the prior year needs to ultimately match the beginning balance for the current year. And if they're different, it's going to be impossible to do the tax return without a significant amount of kind of troubleshooting and accounting cleanup. So what our firm offers is we have what's called a setup service. And the setup service basically takes a set of books. We're going to clean it up in through a period of time. So maybe it's just all of 2023 or maybe, hey, Taylor, I haven't done my books in four months. Part of the engagement is to clean that up make it perfect as of a certain date. But also what we do is make sure that the balance sheet numbers agree exactly to what's being reported on the tax return. Important stuff here. So before we kind of dive any further, you know, software, there's a ton of software out there that people can use to do their accounting. Could we kind of talk a little bit about first, why property management software alone, the reports you get from property management software alone is not enough? Great question. So let me start with kind of saying 
what most of our clients do. And, and then I'll answer the question and take it from there. So most of our clients, what they do is they have a property management software that's obviously designed to handle tenant payments, pay expenses, tenant requests. So like you're talking about building a portfolio, Yardy, rent manager, there's a million of them. And we see them all every single day. Then what they'll do is they'll take the data from the property management software and our accounting team will import it into QuickBooks Online. And QuickBooks Online is really our final kind of source of truth for the accounting records. And that's what's going to match the tax return. Now, the reason why property management software is generally not good enough is because they like to track income and expenses by property. And there's not really a bunch of features to track some of the more advanced options in QuickBooks. So things like intercompany transactions, the PM software struggle with, things like equity accounts and loan accounts and amortization schedules and escrow accounts. Uh, these are things that are really difficult to track in a property management software, especially if you have multiple owners and multiple partners and multiple LLCs. QuickBooks has class tracking, and that's designed to really accommodate multiple properties, multiple LLCs. Maybe you need a couple different QuickBooks files to have different balance sheets for each tax return, where a PM software can't really do that. It's all it's all merged together for the most part. It's good to know because I know a lot of people out there, they just uh, they got their property management statements and they think they're in the clear, but we all know that that's not, that's not the case as Taylor just alluded to. So I know, I know you mentioned QuickBooks. And I know that's our go-to software. And to, just to be, to be clear, everybody, we're not affiliated with QuickBooks. We don't get compensated by QuickBooks in any way. We literally use QuickBooks because it's what we believe to be one of the best accounting solutions for real estate investors. So with that said, you know, some when people are just starting out, maybe they just have one or two properties, they might be using spreadsheets. What are the downsides of spreadsheets? And then at what point does an investor need to take that next step and go to a more robust accounting solution? It's a great question. And uh, when I started my real estate investing journey, and I found it to be similar for every single one of our clients is that once you get around four to five units, it becomes really difficult to manage all of the transactions on a spreadsheet. Because essentially what you're doing is you're trying to get a list of all these bank transactions into a spreadsheet, code them by each property, uh, run uh, pivot tables by date, by property, and it gets pretty cumbersome to do that. So one, you need to be an Excel or Google Sheet expert to be able to do that beyond a property or two. But also QuickBooks just has so many features that makes it way more efficient. So they're able to link your bank account so you can pull transactions automatically instead of exporting an Excel file of your bank statement. You can set up rules where if the bank detail says uh, Starbucks, can easily code it to meals and entertainment automatically. Things like that are setting you up to scale. And the other thing, of course, is that QuickBooks has a very advanced reporting system that if you need a balance sheet to match the tax return, if you need a balance sheet to show a lender or an investor, you're able to do that. Where on a spreadsheet, having to hand do it every time just takes too much time. So, Yeah, that bank feed coming in just automatically is a really nice feature to have. It really is. I know sometimes, depending on banks, uh, at least in the older days, I feel like <laughs> I'm we're all young, but I'm saying older days uh, as though this was a long time ago. But back like in the day, I feel like some banks, it was like you would connect it and then you'd have like these issues like continuing to go back and forth and, and connecting it. But right, you can kind of get around that issue with even within QuickBooks, you've got a bank reconciliation option, basically, right? And you could even add on to that, like all the apps that can go on with this, right? Mile, mile tracking, you can do time tracking, all of that. Sure, that might be additional costs. Some of those things I think are free. But just to have all of that information in one spot, and all the other features, yeah, it's going to cost something for sure. But a lot of people are just going to see that as a cost of business. Uh, so I think people just need to get over that if they want to kind of get more sophisticated. And last thing on that for my comment is automation. Like you mentioned, like the automatic rules and, and all of that. I use that for myself, for my rental properties. All of that is is really helpful. Uh, what about uh, like hiring it out to other people? When When do people normally decide or when do you think people should actually consider hiring it out to someone else? Yeah, sure. So we have... So our client base is pretty diverse. Uh, we have clients that outsource bookkeeping that have one or two properties. We have clients that have a couple hundred properties that have outsourced it to us. I think really 
the question that I, I typically ask is when are you spending enough time on it where it makes sense for you to focus on something higher value to your specific business? So accounting is extremely important, but it's also typically a lot more efficient to have us do it and then have the owners and investors uh, focus on acquiring more deals, a focus, a, a focus on getting better debt, raising more capital, improving properties. That's going to add the value that they need while also not taking up too much of their time on keeping track of the books. So any size really makes sense. It's just when you're getting to a point where you're spending too much time on it. A hundred percent. You know, there's a book, Who Not How, right? In the book, Who Not How, it's about optimizing your time. And as a real estate investor, the highest best use time is exactly what Taylor just said. Raising money, finding deals, get optimizing your portfolio. And when you're not doing that, you don't want to spend nights or Sundays or mornings doing bookkeeping, right? <laughs> like who wants to do that? Like, uh, unless you're a professional, obviously I'm saying as a real, I'm talking from a real estate investor's perspective. If you want to be spending time with friends and family, you want to be doing your hobbies, maybe you have other businesses you're running. Do you really want to be doing bookkeeping if it's taking up a substantial amount of your time? And it's funny you said that, Tom, because as I told you earlier, so I'm an investor myself. I use QuickBooks online. I've got six or seven files and I don't even do my own bookkeeping and I'm almost as efficient as they as they get, right? So I'd rather spend time on higher value activities. And the higher value activities don't necessarily mean that you have to be out of accounting altogether. It's still important as a business owner that 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 you understand your numbers, that you're reviewing your financials, understand how you're tracking to what you thought you would be tracking to. I spend more time on that now as opposed to actually the data entry the coding things to repairs versus utilities or insurance, things like that. I'm focused on, hey, did we actually make money this month? Which property crushed it and, and which one is underperforming? So, Hey, real quick, if you're a longtime listener of the show, then you know we give all of our tax secrets away for free. From how to use the real estate professional status and short-term rental loophole to save thousands of dollars in taxes and just about everything in between, we don't hold anything back. And that's because our goal is to help as many real estate investors as possible reduce taxes and build tax advantage wealth, regardless of budget. And the only way we're able to help more real estate investors is if you can rate, review, and share the podcast. If you could take that one small action, just drop us a review. It'll take like 10 seconds. It will help more real estate investors become tax smart. We appreciate your support. And now back to the show. It's a great point. Great point. So we discussed a lot so far, you know, doing it yourself, outsourcing it when that makes sense. I know there's ways that we can help people with, you know, setting up an accounting system all the way through helping them run it. There's two different ways we could do it. We could help you do it through a boot camp, right? And uh, we could do it through, you could outsource it to us. Tell, would you be able to kind of just walk us through? Because I know you're now the host or the boot camp creator now. You know, what would make sense? Like, when would it make sense for someone to jump on a boot camp and, and maybe they do it themselves? Maybe they have one of their office managers or, or someone on their team do it versus, you know, I guess, what would that look like? And then from there, if they want to outsource it, what would that look like and what next steps would be? Sure. So I'll start with the boot camp. So maybe you have a couple long term rentals, maybe you have one Airbnb or something like that. That I could totally understand why you'd want to do it uh, yourself for cost reasons, for just learning the business and, and really trying to immerse yourself in all things real estate in the beginning. I think that makes sense. And what we did is I made a boot camp that basically walks you through how to set up QuickBooks as a real estate investor. Because one of the great things about QuickBooks is that it's really customizable for a ton of businesses. Like you could run a pizza shop, you could run a clothing store. On the contrary, though, there's a couple of things you need to do to make it work perfectly for real estate. So that course goes through it. There's a bunch of different modules to go through to watch videos. There's a couple of different explanations of really real estate specific things. And by the end of it, you should have a system that you can kind of maintain yourself going forward. Then once you get past that kind of one to two unit range and you feel like you're spending a little bit too much time on it, our firm offers a variety of different services. So I'll just go through those quick as well. So the first one is called a setup service. And the setup service is kind of what I was referring to earlier, that it basically cleans up a mess of a situation as of a certain time. It's a one-time engagement. It's a cleanup. It's a project that our setup team, a specialist who basically just does the messier situations or the setups, will take and then be ready to give back to you or to start on one of our monthly service offerings. So our monthly service offerings, there's a variety of different levels, but just to explain them quickly. So a bookkeeping engagement is going to be 
uh, more compliance focus, just getting you a clean set of financials each month so that ultimately you can review them. You can ask questions to us via email, and that's going to get you a QuickBooks report that's perfectly reconciled each month. Then if you'd like more advanced reporting, we also have a controller level service which basically will give you some really nice charts and graphs and really key KPIs to help track your business. So I recommend this option if you need help kind of thinking of what are those metrics that I might need to help run my business? Because we see a lot of real estate clients, a lot of different industries in the real estate space, and we can help you come up with those KPIs and show you on the report to uh, use and help make decisions. And then last but not least, we also have our CFO service level, which is basically the most custom of the service offerings. And what that's going to do is it's not only going to focus on what your books look like retroactively, but it's also going to focus in the future. So what that means is in addition to those those really nice charts and graphs, you might need cash flow forecasting. Uh, how much money do I expect to have in six months? You might need budgeting. Um, well, this multifamily was expected to do 200 grand of income this year, but it only hit 180. Why is that? It may look at expenses. So why is my utility bill higher than it was? Uh, hey, owner, can you look into that? Things like that are going to be caught in the CFO service level and really helping you grow the business and kind of take it to the next level. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. And if anybody wants to register for a KBO bootcamp, we are running one in January. You go to www.taxsmartinvestors.com/kbo-waitlist, and you go ahead and join the waitlist. We'll be launching that towards the end of this year. You'll hear more information about that. And if you are interested, you just want to outsource it, or maybe you're at the point where you you just had enough of doing your own bookkeeping. That's all good too. You can go to www.therealestatecpa.com/accounting and request an initial consultation. I'd love to learn more about your situation and how we can help. Um, before we wrap up, any quick tips or, or common mistakes or anything you see people doing that they might need to be aware of as we kind of head into the year end that might be able to help them wrap up their books? Absolutely. So I'll get into a couple. The first one, earlier in this episode, I got into a little bit about why owners shouldn't use property management software as their only bookkeeping solution. It works for some people, but not most. But this situation is if you have a third party property manager. So if you're hiring somebody to manage your rental, most people who come to us think that their property management statement is good enough where you can just have a multifamily investment or a single family home, whatever it may be, and then just take the property manager statement and give it to your CPA and that's it. You're done. You can do a tax return on that. The reason why we need QuickBooks to take that information is because there's other financial transactions that are happening outside of the property manager's scope of work. Uh, multifamily uh, syndicators, I'm talking to you specifically as well. There's other transactions that are going on that, that that's not in the PM scope of work. So it, it might be contributions, distributions, uh, loan accounts getting paid, insurance bills, tax bills, things like that. Those need to be captured somewhere. And a huge mistake would be to ignore those because you're missing key tax deductions. Uh, you're not going to have an accurate balance sheet and your lender is going to be really confused if your PM statement is just your whole set of financials. So that's the first mistake that I see very often. The second mistake I see very often with prospects or clients that aren't using us for accounting is that when they come to us, one of the first things I'll do if I'm reviewing a client's work is I'll look at the last year's tax return. And the form is called Schedule L, if you want to go check it out yourself. But basically, uh, Schedule L is going to have a balance sheet. And there's going to be a total uh, assets number. And there's going to be a total liabilities and equity number on that schedule. If I pull up the balance sheet for the same year, so if it's a, if it's a, if it's a 2022 return, I pull up 123122 and they're not exactly the same in QuickBooks and the tax return, I immediately know something's wrong and it's going to need to clean up. Now, sometimes it's just a simple, oh, Taylor, I forgot to record depreciation and amortization. Um, and that might be a five minute exercise. But other times it could be a pretty significant issue that takes hours, if not days to complete, depending on the size of the client. So those are the two things that I think I see the most. And uh, if you're listening to this, they probably apply to almost 
every single real estate investor that has a partnership or has a property manager. So, And you might be able to get away with like a lot of people, maybe they can kind of get away with just using the property management stuff, right? Because maybe they're just reporting on their schedule E and they're like, well, this is all I need, right? It's my 1040. I don't need a balance sheet. And we get that, but we just want to make sure that you're getting the other half of the financial statement, like you said. And so in my opinion, like property management uh, softwares, they're meant to do property management. <laughs> they're not necessarily meant to be financial statements. Some of them are for sure more sophisticated and they can handle more things like that. But I don't know if all of them, this is my ignorance here, but I don't know if all of them can do things like manual transactions, right? Because then some people might come back and say, well, I'm just going to have my property manager update those financials in there to match. Well then, okay, you might be getting a little bit closer, but what about maybe you've got a separate bank account over here and you might be paying like one utility through that, right? Or some sort of like property taxes. And it's like, how do we make sure that we capture that? We need to have one place, like you said earlier on, that's the go-to, this is the final, this is the truth, and that's it. So I feel like, yeah, people uh, should be thinking about not just the property management statements, but beyond that, like, how do I make sure I get everything into here? Quick question, though. We get this, I get this all the time from clients, and we debate it all the time in the, in the insider, in, in the in the tax smart Facebook group. But why use QuickBooks online? And like, what's the pros for, of using QuickBooks online versus QuickBooks desktop? Sure. So QuickBooks desktop, it's not cloud based. So basically, you have to have it on one physical computer. Uh, you could host it. But what uh, QuickBooks is doing, and obviously, this is a, a business strategy for them, is they're basically stopping the support for QuickBooks Desktop. So I never recommend uh, Desktop because it's really inefficient to access outside of that one computer. If you want other people to look at it, it's really difficult to do so. Uh, QuickBooks Online has much better features as well. So it's really a no-brainer that the cost of the QuickBooks subscription is not that much where the benefits completely outweigh the costs. Yeah, and we, we've seen it so many times where people like, oh, I just have one quick question on my QuickBooks desktop account and trying to get access to that um, has been a nightmare. So, like, like you know, and, and especially in today, not only is it hard to get help from an accountant, right, or a bookkeeper to help you with that, but if in today's world, everybody's traveling all the time, they got their laptops with them, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, you might or you might have multiple computers in multiple places, like having everything cloud based is like the norm these days on so many different levels for so many different reasons. So you heard it there. That's why QuickBooks Online is the go-to. And just one thing, Tom, quick, is that I've probably done 20 or 30 engagements in my life where I will take a desktop file and convert it online for our clients. So that process can be done. If you're on desktop and you're listening to this episode, I'd say certainly within the next few years, but honestly, I'd probably, probably even do it now, is uh, get on desktop. Uh, it's just going to be much simpler going forward for you. 100%. So um, I think that's going to be about it for today. Um, if you do want to join the bootcamp, you are interested in checking that out. Again, that's www.taxsmartinvestors.com slash QBO waitlist. And if you are just interested in outsourcing it, you want to get that conversation started, you can request an initial consultation at www.therealestatecpa.com slash accounting. But Taylor, any any final words before we before we wrap up today? No. Um, if they want to set up a consultation, they'll be talking to me. So that's good motivation enough to, to come to the website. So Awesome. Awesome. So go ahead and drop that in the show notes. Thanks again for joining us, Taylor, and everybody who's out there listening. Uh, happy holidays and have a great rest of your year. We'll be back next week, though, with an interview. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs>